Hi, I'm Jessica Geiger. I'm a medical oncologist at the Tostig Cancer Institute at Cleveland Clinic. Oral cancer refers to cancers that occur anywhere within the oral cavity. So any of the structures there, including the lips, the inner part of the lip or the wet part of the lips, uh, the tongue, the roof of the mouth, the floor of the mouth, the inside of the cheek and the gums around the teeth all comprise the oral cavity. First and foremost, we address oral cancer with surgery. This is surgery with the goal to remove all of the cancer that we can see either by scans or by the naked eye. Depending on the extent of surgery, we often have to use reconstructive surgery as well. Following all surgery, depending on how large the cancer was or how extensive the cancer was, a course of radiation may be recommended. And sometimes we also recommend adding chemotherapy to radiation following surgery for oral cancer. The treatment for oral cancer depends on several factors. How large the cancer is or what the stage of the cancer is, or has it spread into adjacent parts of the mouth or has it even spread to lymph nodes within the neck. That determines the type and the extent of surgery and reconstruction that may be involved. It is not until we see all of the disease and all of the characteristics under the microscope, whether we know if a patient would benefit also from uh, chemotherapy added to radiation. Another factor is the patient's overall health. If the patient, you know, depending on age and overall uh, how healthy they are, other medical conditions may influence the option of surgery or whatever uh, other treatments may be recommended. The invasiveness of a surgery, again, depends on how large the tumor is or how extensive the cancer is. And it can range anywhere from a simple excision of a very small lesion in the tongue or the, the floor of the mouth to very large surgeries, removing the entirety of the tongue, part of the mandible or the jaw. So reconstruction with either plastic surgeons or special head and neck surgeons who have extra training within these reconstructive techniques. Um, they use often other tissues from other parts of the patient's body, including skin or muscles or vessels or even bone from other areas in order to rebuild these critical structures within the mouth to allow for eating and chewing and swallowing to occur again after the patient has recovered. Post-treatment recovery really depends on what the treatment involves. Patients who have undergone extensive surgeries for oral cancer may have feeding tubes uh, to get nutrition and hydration through the course of their recovery or if they need radiation or further treatment beyond a surgery. Speech and language pathology is very integral in uh, demonstrating mechanisms and, and exercises to regain the muscles and the function to be able to swallow again. I would encourage every patient who notices a lesion in the mouth or a lump in the neck or a new growth anywhere in the oral cavity, if nothing goes away within a week or two to seek medical attention. Part of prevention or diagnosing of oral cancer um, it's important to follow with a dentist regularly and not just for a good dental cleaning, but also to ask the dentist to, to take a good look and exam throughout the entire oral cavity to make sure that there are no lesions or spots that are suspicious for either cancer itself or an even, even a precancerous lesion.